Okay, I'm going to chat briefly today a little bit about snake bites. Something slightly different, I suppose, from this course, uh, where we are now sitting outside looking at all the snow. It's, it's often hard to imagine. Snake bites are a really common problem, though, globally. Five and a half million snake bites each year. Not all of those envenomated, but actually it's hard to tell till afterwards whether the snake itself has, has imparted a venom. That's the difference between a dry bite and a wet bite. Of those, still, we're, we're looking at probably somewhere between, and the figures are, aren't great, somewhere between 20,000 and about 100,000 fatalities each year from snake bite. So still a significant cause of, of global morbidity and mortality. So a few different camps and a few different uh, uh, sort of areas of expertise on snake bite. Broadly speaking, though, snakes fall into one of three categories, depending on how, what the sort of type of venom is and how that venom affects the body. And those three categories are what we call a, a neurotoxic snake, a, a snake whose venom affects the nervous system of the body. And basically, that's a, it's, it's a slow paralysis, really. starts with numbness at the area of the sight and a spreading numbness through the body, leading ultimately to, to a numbness and paralysis of the respiratory muscles and ultimately death. Then a different type of snake um, affects the hemotoxic. Um, and basically what that does is it stops the blood clotting. And so effectively you start getting obviously pain at the bite site, a bit of local bleeding, and ultimately that a hemotoxic snake will, will, will kill somebody because of bleeding in the brain, bleeding around the heart and lungs. And finally we have what's called a cytotoxic snake bite. And that's, that causes local muscle destruction. Uh, less, pro probably fewer fatalities than the other two types of snake bites, but even a, a cytotoxic snake with local effects can ultimately lead to uh, failure of the kidneys and, and ultimately death. So, so none of those pathways obviously good. Different parts of the world have predominance of either neurotoxic snakes or, or hemotoxic snakes. Broadly speaking, in, in the States, their commonest snake, the rattlesnake, is a, is a hemotoxic snake. So they tend to manage snake bites one way. Rest of the world, the, the, the sort of leading authority are the Australians who have some of the, some of the most dangerous snakes in the world. Um, and the Australians tend to sort of lead the world in the management of neurotoxic snakes. Um, Africa, Southeast Asia, probably the biggest burden of snake bite. Majority of those snakes are probably neurotoxic. When they talk about the most dangerous snakes in the world, the ones with the most potent venom, I think numbers one to eight are in Australia, and number nine, uh, the, the black mamba, is in, is in Africa. So, so definitely, I, I would say Australia sort of bears the burden, and, and, and broadly, they're now leading on management of snake bites. So how do we manage snake bite? Most snake bites tend to happen in the lower limbs. They often happen in the rainy season, where there's a lot of water on the ground. So, uh, so we, we tend to assume, and most of our management is targeted towards lower limb bites. The principle is snake bite venom is transmitted in the lymphatic system, so it doesn't get pumped around the body with the heart. It actually travels very slowly, so we do have some opportunity to keep it in that area, keep it localised, stop it having those, those systemic effects. And the way we do that, try to keep the casualty as still as possible. If it's on an extremity, the snake bite, remove rings, remove anything that, that, that may cause more problems if the limb swells up. And we talk about a technique called a, a pressure immobilization technique. This is not a tourniquet. There are all sorts of myths around the management of snake bites. People talk about sucking devices, electric shock devices, making extra cuts over the bite. None of that helps and tourniquets really do not help. They, they estimate there are about half a million people in India who've had unnecessary uh, uh, amputations because of the application of a tourniquet. Really, really dangerous in this situation. So we talk about keeping the leg as still as we can and doing a pressure immobilization bandage. Now that's about the same tightness as you would put on a sprained ankle. And what that's trying to do is just keep the, keep the leg compressed, by all means keep the blood flowing, but, but keep the soft tissues compressed to stop that lymphatic spread. And then once you've done that, kept, kept them calm, kept them quiet, we really need to get them to somewhere where they may have anti-venom. Anti-venom is very useful and in some parts of the world, very, very effective. The difficulty with anti-venom is that it's made by injecting uh, the, the venom of a snake into a large animal, often a horse. They're using sheep in the US now. Um, and then letting the horse make some antibodies, 
drawing some horse serum, spinning it down, and the antivenom's made from that. The problem with that is we don't respond particularly well to, uh, uh, to horse blood. So the risk of anaphylaxis, a really nasty allergic reaction, is very, very high. So antivenom has its place for sure, but whenever you use antivenom, if you're going to or wherever you're taking your patient, please make sure there's adrenaline. The studies quote a risk of up to 50% of anaphylaxis in, in, in uh, Sri Lanka, the study was done. And even in, in more developed countries, Australia being the example used in the study, up to 20% of patients had, uh, had anaphylaxis as a result. So once you've got your patient to definitive care and you're, and, and you're looking at, at the use of antivenom, ongoing care is often really important as well, uh, as we do for all our patients. So I think really the, the important thing, and, and, and a rather brief whistle-stop tour through, is, uh, is having a look at, in, in summary for snake bites, we're talking about keeping your patient calm, monitoring your air, airway breathing and circulation, having a look at, at the difference between a neurotoxic and hemotoxic snake, so understanding your area uh, and getting them to help as soon as possible. Thank you.